Welcome to the 24th annual awards conversation with our nominees for online game of the year. Uh, this is one of our big ones, and I'm super excited to talk about all of their games and all of our nominees today. Uh, let's get into the conversation and introduce our folks rocking with us today. From Animal Crossing New Horizons, we have Nate Bildorf. How are you doing, Nate? I'm doing great. How about you? Good, good, good. Excited to have you here. Give the folks at home a little bit of info about the work you've been doing. Uh, I am the Senior Vice President of Product Development and Publishing at Nintendo of America, and I've had the great fortune to work with the Animal Crossing development team since uh, the GameCube game. Um, it was one of the very first games that I worked on in localization, and I am here today to represent Ms. Kyogoku and the entire Animal Crossing team at Nintendo who brought this game out. Super excited to have you here. Coming in from Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, we have David Vondahar. Hey, David, how are you doing? How's everything going? Hello. Thank you so much for the invitation. Uh, this is a lot of fun for me. I'm really grateful for the opportunity to connect with all of you. Uh, and get away from my desk for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Super excited to have you here. Give the folks at home a little info about the work you've been doing in this space as well. Yeah, thank you very much. I mean, uh, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War just launched season two of six seasons, so we're hard at work. Uh, and really, one of the fun things that we're doing right now is learning how to connect Warzone with Cold War. And that's a fun new experience, uh, having a free-to-play uh, franchise game. So all sorts of new fun for us to work on and give experiences to fans. Super, super cool. Uh, we also have, from the Fall Guys team, we have Joe Walsh. How you doing, Joe? Hey, yeah, doing good. Doing really good. Good, good. Give the folks at home a little bit of info about you as well. Yeah, so I've been working on Fall Guys since literally day one, like when we were prototyping it, just a couple of us, and have seen the game through till launch, and now we're over six months into, into like operating a live game and, and keeping things updated and bringing brand new stuff to Fall Guys pretty much every week, so... Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty hectic at the moment, but uh, yeah, we've got some really cool stuff in the pipeline. Very, very happy to have you here as well. And uh, coming in from Ghost of Tsushima, we have Darren Bridges. How are you doing, Darren? Doing good. Thank you. Good. Give the folks at home a little info about the work you've been doing in the space as well. Yeah, so we, lost, we, we launched Ghost uh, in August of last year or something like that. Uh, <laughs> Legends, uh, Legends launched uh, a few months after uh, as a surprise reveal. So um, I was the lead uh, designer on Legends, which is the cooperative aspect of, of the game. I'm with you too. I don't know what time is anymore. Who knows? I, what time it is doesn't anymore. matter. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows at this point? Uh, also, in, in rounding out our group, <laughs> rounding out our group from Tetris Effect Connected, we have Tatajima-san. How are you doing? Hello. Yeah, I'm good. Super excited to have you here. Give the folks at home a little bit of information about the work you've done in the video game industry as well. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm we are from I'm from Enhance, and yeah, we created Tetris Effect Connected, and uh, last November, uh, and I'm the uh, I am the lead online lead game designer, a multiplayer. Uh, sorry, multiplayer lead game designer. Uh, yeah, I uh, yeah I made most of the game rules or and uh, yeah balance and parameter things. Yeah, I did that, that kind of things. Very, very cool. We have, we have a fantastic grouping of folks. Again, thank you all for being here uh, to talk about online game of the year. Uh, the first question I want to get into is kind of a, you know, one of what we're going around and asking all of you is, you know, ha have we reached a point where kind of the single player linear structured games are kind of in their kind of twilight moment? Do you feel like that's going to be a thing that's kind of going away? Um, and, and will online play kind of rule the market in the, the coming years? And if so, you know, what kinds of online environments do you think are going to kind of play best and, and, and have its kind of best spaces for it? Um, Joe, I'm, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this, uh, especially with the game that you've made that feels like, you know, you, you all have done some really cool stuff in a very short time uh, to kind of bridge that conversation out. So I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Yeah, I mean, Fall Guys is like the first type of game like this Media Tonic has ever made. So we are like truly treading new ground as a company and, and learning what it means to make multiplayer games. And I think that games that are more and more social and lead, lead, lean more into almost like more social spaces than gameplay, I think is going to be a thing that we see more of. I think like the, the gap between Zoom calls and multiplayer games is going to continue to shrink until we're not going to know the difference. I mean, I don't think single player games are going anywhere by any means, but I think mm. finding new ways to connect people and finding new ways to bring people together is exactly what we've always been trying to do at Mediatonic. And what we wanted to do with Fall Guys was to bring like some happiness and some humor 
into that. And I think that I, I would love to see like other studios now kind of pick up that gamut and, and really run with it and see see what other pockets and, and niches there there are within that that sort of social space. Yeah. Um, Darren, I'm curious to hear your thoughts because you know, with 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 the work you've been doing with Tsushima and, and kind of digging into the space now in, in this way, I'd love to hear your thoughts about that. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, you know, we uh when we started working on Ghost, we knew from the beginning we wanted to do a big cooperative component. Um, and one of the first things we did was kind of think about what is uh, what is appealing about single player content. You know, what will carry over easily to co-op, and then what things kind of fall apart when you when you add another player. Um, and I, you know, I think that there will be. Uh, I think we'll continue to see cooperative and and multiplayer content. You know, and new ways to integrate those things. Um, uh, happen, but I think that there's always going to be a place for people who just want to play single player, you know, just, just like almost on a personality thing. Some people are like, I don't want to deal with other people in my game. Um, <laughs> <but>. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I lean that way sometimes more often than not. So I understand that from a conceptual and an actual real, real perspective. Um, David, you know, your, your game has for a long time and the games you've been working on for a long time have had both components and be a major part of those games uh, and, and their releases. I'm curious to hear your thoughts about kind of, you know, where do you think the online space is going and if we're seeing the kind of not ending of, of single player stuff, but kind of the, you know, shortening of, the, of those parts of it. Yeah, and this is coming from an online guy, but there's, you know, such a massive um, appetite and interest in just sort of uh, telling the story and not having to play with other people. I mean, that's <laughs> that's what I did when I was done playing multiplayer games. I was playing Ghost, and I, uh, you know, to, in single player because I, I just wanted to get away from all that other stuff. So I think there's still home for that stuff. We're still committed to that stuff uh, in our games, and it's a big important part of that. For Call of Duty, as such a massive audience that we can't create enough online content to keep people uh, satisfied. So you've got a competitive multiplayer experience, you've got a VR experience, uh, you've got co-op experiences in our case with the Zombies universe, including a new sort of outside, outdoorsy, more open world-like experience for zombies, which has never existed except for until a couple of days ago. So I think there's still lots of room to innovate in the online space, you know, just to keep up uh, with the demand. And where all those things intersect is where it's really going to be fun for me, I think, and the studios. Yeah, yeah. Tete Jima-san, I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. And, you know, with Tetris, Tetris Effect um, kind of playing the way it does, you know, what were your thoughts about kind of the online space and, and you know, having that be a major component of, of the game you made? Uh, yeah. Mm, so, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can't say something uh, yeah, special about that. Um, yeah, maybe the both will survive. Uh, yeah. Single player is also uh, single players. Uh, yeah, nice and yeah, multiplayer is yeah growing because of the yeah the, because the networking is uh, getting better and better. So yeah, we can easily connect it to you can easily be connected to each other. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah. Um, thank you for sharing that. I it is it is very, very cool to see exactly how things have kind of moved in that way. And I think, Nate, the, the angle I want to poke at that with you is, you know, Animal Crossing feels like its own metaverse at this point in, in that way. <laughs> you know, where, where yeah. do you kind of see things moving in the, in the online spaces moving forward and, and kind of, you know, do you think that that's going to be the thing that's going to wind up being the 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 kind of more encompassing route? Is, 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 is we're going to see more metaverse experiences in that way? Well, I do think that, you know, the the experience um, of Animal Crossing from, from conception, from the very first game was about communication. You know, it was about communication between people, uh, you communication between you and the animals in your village. Um, and in many ways, uh, I think that we're getting closer and closer to what its true final form should be, which is um, something that has a nice virtuous loop of gameplay between single player and, and multiplayer. You know, I. I spent a ton of time on my own before I allowed anybody on it, you know, because <laughs> it's like, you want to put your house in order. You want it to be cool. You don't want, you know, stuff laying all around. And then once you start traveling, you, um, you find new things, you get different items on different islands. You get, you come back with different ideas. There's incentives to, to open your gates, whether you're, you know, I mean, you know, playing the, uh, playing the tournament market or, you know, whatever you're doing, there's, 
um, you're getting a benefit from traveling, but then you're going back and spending a ton of time back on your own in the single player component to then feed back into the loop of having other people come over. So um, hey, man, I think it's, uh, yeah. Can I ask you a question real quick? Yeah, go for it. Can you not put your game out right when we're trying to finish ours? Because it's a real distraction <laughs> for us. Uh, you know, and, and I, it's uh, kind of getting in the way. I mean, it's a small ask, but you know, can you call me offline? Talk it over with me, please. Yeah, I'll, I'll pass that. I'll pass that along to the directors. But yeah, Thanks, I, you know, I agree. And I, I mean, even for those of us who you know were working on it prior to it coming out, the second it came out, we were immediately diving back in and, and rebuilding everything that we played with during debug. Um, and yeah, finding the uh, appropriate amount of time to spend, you know, recreating on the island outside of work, I think it's been a challenge for a lot of us. But um, yeah, the online space and the single player space, I think will continue to be um, really equally important and hopefully uh, can nurture each other. Yeah. I, and I just have this image of David just trying to run over to Nintendo headquarters and just flip the switch <laughs> off for the, for the servers. It's, not, it's our time, damn it. It's our time. Um, <laughs> I'd love to hear your yeah. thoughts because, you know, there have been other multiplayer Tetris games in the past. Yeah. You know, what was your approach to Connected that made this experience different for the players? And, and what were you trying to kind of accomplish with this version of the multiplayer aspect of their game? I, yeah, uh, as you may know, there is yeah already uh, so many. There, there's, there are all so many multiplayer Tetris before. You may know Tetris 99 or Pyopio Tetris. So yeah, uh, so Tetris Connected is just one of the, these bunch of uh, multiplayer Tetris games. So we needed to make this title something special. Yeah. So yeah, this is our challenge. Um, so yeah, uh, as you might know, Tetris Effect Connected is an expanded version, updated version of Tetris Effect that that's released in 2018. 2018. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am not the developer of the original Tetris Effect, but I think the original Tetris Effect was uh, really successful for its relaxing experience. Uh, yeah, combined with uh, beautiful audio visual and yeah, simple yet fun gameplay. Um, yeah. Also, since the Tetris effect is really released, uh, its community has become really warm and friendly. Yeah, that's super impressive. So we thought it's best to make our main multiplayer mode non-competitive, non-competitive, and so and yeah, make the uh, make it uh, yeah, something like strong competitive uh, mode. Yeah. So, so then uh, as a result, we made a three player cooperative mode named uh, connected mode. And mm. this mode, yeah, and have, this mode enables the players' board, players playing board, uh, uh, enables the players' board to combine or to connect it into one. Yeah. Two of a delight, it worked uh, really well. Um, players loved this mode. That's super good news. <laughs> I, I mean, I love it. I think I, I have multiple friends who tell me often that this, <laughs> this is their go to bed game before they go to bed. This is the thing that de decompresses them uh, as a way to kind of play together and, and get that stuff done. I, I'm curious, Darren, I, I'd love to hear your thoughts too, because I think, you know, if I'm not mistaken, this is one of the first kind of multiplayer you know, leaps for, for the studio. Am I right on that, in that respect? Yeah. Yeah. We did, uh, we did uh, on Sly Cooper three back in like 2005, we had kind of same screen multiplayer, but yeah, this is, this is a whole new journey for us. Yeah. Um, so, so I'm curious, what, like what were some of the kind of foundational elements that the team wanted to kind of work through development and, and make sure we're in the multiplayer section and, and, you know, so that you knew it was going to, or hopefully make sure it was going to find success. Yeah, so like I said, it was from the beginning, we knew we wanted to do it. And um, there are some elements of uh, the single player game that that transfer really well to co-op, you know, and, and we wanted to identify what was gonna work and what wasn't. So things like the hero actions, third person camera, you know, the setting, the environment, all that stuff, completely easy to transfer over to co-op. Um, but then you have things like uh, the hero's journey, you know, Jin Ghost of Tsushima is a single player story about a single character. and you know, in, in co-op, you have four heroes. We didn't want to have four gins kind of staring awkwardly at each other. Um, like, who are you? What are you doing here? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, 
Ghost is an open world um, kind of, it's kind of, a, it's an open world game, but it's kind of a sequential story and experience. And we knew that co-op would have more kind of segmented ex gameplay where you join and leave and, and, um, and then also Ghost is, you know, very much about immersion and, and feeling like you're part of the world. And if your friends making fart jokes on the mic, you know, it's going to disrupt that. So we knew we couldn't rely on that in, we wanted to move what we were focusing on in co-op to be kind of more robust, like our, our narrative delivery and our, our what, how we made you feel immersed. We wanted to be more robust against that because um, we knew we we're going to have other players in the space at the same time. Yeah. And I would say it was my know, favorite single player game that I played uh, for sure. And, I, and it was, the, and I, I can see your journey with the co-op, right? I, uh, I think a lot of us have been there. Um, so it, it's a, it's a really strong, strong showing. I really love that game. Yeah. And, and I would even add to that too, you know, my expectations for what that 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 multiplayer element was was going to be was 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 wasn't low, but it was one of those things where I knew that I was like, this team has a really good eye for how to get people to kind of play together in the spaces that that you kind of built in that way. I think that that bridges over to 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 a question I have for you, David, where you know you're a veteran of this space. You've been doing these multiplayer games for a long time in the online space and, and building that out one of the, the the things that I am always thinking about when I pick up the controller to play a, a Call of Duty game is, you know, how how are you keeping all of this fresh? You know, how are you continuing to figure out ways to, you know, get people to want to squat up together with new with, with each new edition of the game? And, and, you know, how do you kind of continue to have this kind of really consistent game in the market? And, and how do you keep, keep bringing people back into the fold? Uh, how much time do we have? I'm thinking about writing my master's uh, uh, thesis. On yeah, this you got a minute and a half. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I think um, for us as a, a collection of studios and Treyarch specifically, man, it is this never dull moment striking this balance between don't change this thing that I love mm. and give me something new. All right. And it, it is a, 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 a lifestyle choice to try to figure out how to do that. Uh, and I think you'll see, especially with the, the free DLC seasons, um, uh, us introducing new ways of playing Call of Duty to players, and then we'll see what they gravitate towards, right? You absolutely have to provide that core experience, especially in multiplayer, like traditional competitive multiplayer. Mm -hmm. uh, you better not mess that up. <laughs> right. And then um, but you still get to do innovation with your mechanics and your features in the, in the campaign side of the games. You do a lot of innovation when you have a zombies universe because you can throw out physics and uh, all the rules. You can have spells and whatever that lets you do some crazy things that don't belong in a Call of Duty game, but work perfectly mm -hmm. well. Right. So that's how we do those things. But I think most importantly, um, at least um, in the immediate. Right. Uh, there's just the scale, which is just kind of, you know, insane relative uh, to a lot of games that allows us to create and craft, um, you know, different experiences because it's so big. It's not like there's a call of duty person or player you have people <laughs> who love co-op. You have people who only love campaign. You love the people who have competitive. There's like a, there's a whole group of people even in the universe of call of duty that play call of duty. Uh, and so you and we have to scale large enough to service all of those people and they all need different things from the game. So you innovate strong in some areas and you protect things in others. And I think that's really how you can do it and be consistent with it. Uh, you know, that's sort of the hard part is when you have a, you know, a game that comes out every year. How do you go from game to game to game, which we're really working hard on right now to make sure we get that right. Yeah. I think and, and, and that, I think it's, go ahead. I'm sorry. Keep, go ahead. So I was going to say, like, I think it's really good that. Like Call of Duty has probably been one of the most innovative, come like innovative franchises in like the the battle royale space. Like I think every developer saw the Gulag and was like, "Oh my god, that's such a good idea!" <laughs> like th things like that have just really helped push that 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 game forward in in a way that I think people maybe didn't expect. And it, it, like it still shows with the stuff that you guys are adding to like to Warzone at the moment with zombies. It is never what people expect, and I think that is a really big part of it. Yeah, thank you very much. We we have some really cool stuff uh, that's going to unfold over the next couple of seasons uh, that I think fans will be into. And, and it's really interesting for us because you're connecting the Cold War narrative and creative universe with Warzone, right? So you have all these aspects of Cold War, you know, kind of 
feeding into 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 uh, Verdansk, the map Verdansk, the BR core map. So uh, I cannot wait till people uh, get a load of what we got going on. Yeah, I yeah. think it's um, I think it's. And we were talking before about like narrative being replaced by multiplayer, and I think what you're seeing is that actually you can do really fun stuff with narrative in the multiplayer space now, which I think the the kind of the the era of just play your match match make again play another one is kind of changing into people actually do care about these multiplayer worlds in a way that five years ago we didn't start multiplayer designs with what the narrative and creative beats are and huh. now we are right so multiplayer's creative development effort starts for us with that sort of what's you know what's the story that we're trying to tell and then everything kind of feeds out of that that's a very campaign or single player way of looking at things right multiplayer was like competitive three lane map structure go right and now <laughs> and now it's not it's there's a lot more and a lot more connection points and you're telling um in some cases continuing the story of your game after your game's out for still another year so uh, i think you're gonna see a lot of fun stuff with that and how story and creative and narrative beats all impact the game design itself right the systems yeah. and mechanics and features and I, and I think joe you, and i'm happy you kind of poked at that because one of the questions i wanted to ask you is you know you have, in your case, you know, you're a bunch of, of, of fantastic upstarts who, who have now made a hit game in this way. And, you know, I, I am sure, you know, since you're in your fourth season now, that you're still trying to figure out the good balance between player feedback and ideas that you all are still kind of coming up with in your own heads. Um, I, I'm just curious to know, you know, what's the challenge between balancing those things out um, while creating new challenges and also then kind of remixing some of the stuff that people know and love? Yeah, I mean, I think we're we're figuring it out as we go. Like we're not we're still trying to figure out what the slime is made of. Like there are very <laughs> basic questions that we never had a chance to answer during development, where we're trying to like catch up a little bit. But the community has really helped drive those decisions, and I think we're learning more and more that you like the quicker that feedback process can be with the community, the better. And I think we're in a really unique place where. You know, I could just go onto the Discord when we're figuring out which which the next show we want to run is, and I can just ask like quickly, what are you guys enjoying? Like, we don't have to necessarily go and do a deep dive into the analytics. We can have like a very frank conversation with very passionate people and be open that we're we've messed things up in the past. You know, we're not getting it right, and we are a studio that is doing this for the first time. And I think we found the community really appreciate that honesty and that openness. That like. Yeah, oh, this this map is horrendously broken today, so we're going to pull it out, but it'll be back, and and, and we're working on building that trust with the community. And um, yeah, it's, and the community as well have had like great ideas that we've implemented into the game. They've had some really nice ideas for like the hexagon only show that we've been running, which is the only yeah. map anyone ever seems to want to play. And it's it's a great <laughs> thing to just throw up online for a, for a day and let people battle out. And that stuff comes from just saying to the community like, when you guys want to play this weekend, and and us furiously implementing it as fast as we can. Yeah. I, I am sure. Low scale, by the way, over the years. You see this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just let me know. I'm just trying to help I'm, you out. I mean, man, I, I haven't made a game yet, and I've already lost all of it. So I don't even know what to say about that conversation <laughs> about the hair part. Um, Nate, I'm I'm curious to to hear your thoughts about you know with with Animal Crossing. You have so many elements that are all kind of working in tandem. Uh, you know, so many characters. You know, weather events and and, and, and island events and all those things kind of happening all together. You know, what was kind of the most important element that, that when you were thinking about the online portion of the game that you had to make sure you got right? Well, I think, um, you know, from the beginning, it, it uh, there had to be intrinsic value in it, of course. Um, mm. But, um, you know, not only tangible value in the sense that there are things that you can get um, or things that you can accelerate getting uh, by, by traveling to other islands, um, but also the ease with which people could do it to encourage um, not only you to, to share with your friends and family, um, but also to maybe make new new friends and new family members. <laughs> um, you know, the, the idea of an anim my Animal Crossing family is huge. Um, they are uh, not limited to blood relatives. They are coworkers. <laughs> they're friends that I've made along the way. Um, and the, uh, I think the, the true vision of it didn't come, uh, come to the fore until uh, we managed to update with the Dream Suite, because I think being able to, to travel tangibly to other islands by seaplane was very, very important, of course. Um, but I also personally really think that it was important to be able to lie down in the bed and just see what else is out there. Um, you know, this is a, a game where it, it truly is a, a toolbox for people to play with. And the 
Um, the advancement of the multiplayer aspect of the game really is dependent on the everybody else playing with those tools and creating amazing things for the rest of us to see and get inspired by. And um, I think uh, I, I just will never get tired of it. I mean, there's a there's certainly a great pleasure in going and seeing you know the new renovations that my friend has done, maybe going over there during a meteor shower so I can get a, a whole bunch of of you know little bits to rain down on my island, but. There's also just great value in before I go to bed at night, just going and checking out a random island um, that, you know, I somebody passed me the code for. It's, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm fascinated by people's creativity. And I think that the greatest strength of this game is the ability to um, really shine a spotlight on that, uh, you know, millions of times over uh, across across the world. Well, the, the creativity of the folks in this room is paramount, again, as, as shown by the folks nominated today. Um, and now I get a chance to give someone an award for, for all their hard work and the team that they have built up to make all these wonderful games. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. So our winner uh, for the DICE Online Game of the Year Award goes to Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout. Congratulations. Hey. Congrats, congrats, congrats. Congrats. So. Yeah, I mean, like, we talked a little bit about doing doing things that haven't been done before. And when we launched the game, we we didn't know if anybody was ever going to play it. Like, we, we really were worried that the servers would have 60 people barely, and, and that would be that. And, you know, two days into release, it was just this huge relief of pressure that I didn't really realize had built up over the like two, three years of development. It's this huge moment of just like, oh my God, people like it, people care. And then you see it grow and you see it build into this like passionate community who like will like furiously campaign for like tail tag versus team tail tag versus the levels that they think should be in the game. Like it's just so lovely to have a community that cares so passionately about, about your game and uh, very thankful for everyone who's played it, everyone who allows us to like come to work every day and like solve those headaches about what to do next and, and what needs attention. It's it's the situation that I always wanted to be in, is, is waking up and checking the forums and seeing what people are saying. And I'm uh, very, very thankful to everyone who's, you know, voted for this and then given us a chance to to make this game. It's a, it's a pretty incredible position to be in. Well, again, congratulations to you and the team. And again, you know, thank everyone here who is nominated. You've all been uh, fantastic to, to be able to share your thoughts about the games you've made and the work you've been able to do. So, so Nate, David, Joe, Darren, and Tatajima-san, then thank you so much for, for being here. Uh, and uh, we'll see you all soon uh, at the rest of the awards. And hopefully we can do this sometime in the future in real, in, in real life, in person. That would be fantastic to be able to say that we got the chance to hang out. So thanks again for all of you for being here. And uh, we'll see everybody else at home very, very soon.